Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. Hello citizens of the internet. Today I am going to discuss magnesium sulfate, one of the prima donna drugs used in obstetrics. First, I want to point out that recently in 2013, US FDA changed the category of magnesium sulfate from category A drug to category D drug, mainly because of the risk of fetal demineralization. Despite this, ACOG and all other organizations all over the world still recommend use of magnesium sulfate in appropriate doses in obstetrics. In common parlance, magnesium sulfate is known as Epsom salt. It has a molecular weight of 246 and 1 gram of salt contains 98 milligrams of elemental magnesium. It has also been called the forgotten mineral or the Fisent mineral. Magnesium sulfate is a wonder compound that produces different actions when given by different routes of administration. Given intravenously, it is the drug of first choice for prevention and treatment of eclampsia. Anhydrous magnesium sulfate is commonly used as a desiccant. Oral magnesium sulfate or magnesium hydroxide is commonly used as a saline laxative. Epsom salt is also available in a gel form for topical application in treating aches and pains. Important points in the pharmacokinetics of the drug are the normal serum levels of magnesium vary from 1.6 to 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. Magnesium is not absorbed orally and kidneys excrete magnesium. Magnesium acts in many intracellular processes. It blocks NMDA subtypes of glutamate channel receptor in voltage dependent manner. Peripherally, it acts at the NM junction causing blockade of calcium entering the cell and blocking calcium at the intracellular sites, thus reducing the presynaptic acetylcholine release at the end plate and reducing motor end plate sensitivity to acetylcholine. It also has central action. It is preferentially taken up by the hippocampus and the cerebral cortex rich in NMDA receptors. Its actions include cerebral vasodilatation, reduction in inflammatory cytokines and or oxygen free radicals and or inhibition of calcium influx into cells. It inhibits platelet activation. It decreases systemic vascular resistance. It dilates the orbital vessels, increases cardiac output, renal blood flow and uteroplacental blood flow. It is available in injectable form for parenteral in, that is intramuscular or intravenous use. Two concentrations are commonly used in obstetrics. 50% magnesium sulfate is available as 2 ml solution which contains 1 gram of the salt. It is used for intramuscular administration. 20% magnesium sulfate is available as a 5 ml ampule containing 1 gram which is used for intravenous administration. Magnesium sulfate is also available as an anhydrous powder for topical use. It has certain contraindications. Magnesium sulfate should be used with caution in women with impaired renal function. Parenteral administration is contraindicated in patients with heart block or myocardial damage. Magnesium sulfate is contraindicated in patients with myasthenia gravis. Magnesium sulfate can interact with other drugs such as general anesthetic agents and nifedipine. When magnesium sulfate and nifedipine are used together, there is a significant drug interaction which produces profound hypertension that can potentially harm or kill the fetus. Magnesium sulfate is used both in gynecology as well as obstetrics. 
a gauze soaked with anhydrous magnesium sulfate solution is applied to edematous vulva or edematous pelvic organ prolapse for its hygroscopic action magnesium sulfate is the drug of choice for preventing and treating convulsions in severe preeclampsia and eclampsia it is also recommended for prevention of cerebral palsy in preterm infants because of its fetal neuroprotective action although used it is not a good tocolytic agent now i will talk at length about the use of the drug for seizure protection various different protocols are used for this indication the most important and most commonly used regimen is the pritchard protocol initially a loading dose of 4 grams or 20% magnesium sulfate is given intravenously over 5 to 10 minutes plus another 10 grams of magnesium sulfate is given intramuscularly using undiluted 50% solution half of the dose in each butter if the convulsions persist or recur over 15 minutes another 2 grams or 20% magnesium sulfate is given intravenously over 5 minutes then give a maintenance dose of 5 grams of 50% magnesium sulfate solution with 1 ml of 2% lignocaine in the same syringe by deep intramuscular injection into alternate buttocks every 4 hours intramuscular administration of magnesium sulfate can be very painful hence it should be administered deep intramuscularly in the gluteal region using a 3 inch long 20 gauge needle 1 ml of 2% lignocaine may also be added to reduce pain each injection should be preceded by aspiration to ensure that the needle tip is not in a blood vessel massaging the buttock after the injection will help disperse the magnesium into the tissue BMC by at the University of Tennessee has introduced guidelines for magnesium sulfate administration because intramuscular injections are very painful CBI has omitted intramuscular administration in his regimen a loading dose of 6 g that is 30 ml of 20% magnesium sulfate diluted in 100 ml of 5% dextrose is given over 10 to 15 minutes then as a maintenance dose 20 g of 50% magnesium sulfate added to 1000 ml of dextrose given as intravenous infusion at a rate of 100 ml per hour in india however because the body weight of indian women is less a low dose regimen is preferred suman sardesai from vm medical college sholapur first introduced and popularized the low dose regimen in 1997 The low dose regimen that we use is as follows. As a loading dose, 4 grams of magnesium sulfate is given intravenously, but the intramuscular dose is 4 grams instead of 5 grams in each bottle. That is the total loading dose is 12 grams. Then a maintenance dose of 2.5 grams is given intramuscularly every 4 hours. Internationally, the Dhaka regimen is more popular. but it is based on the low dose regimen that was first introduced in india here a loading dose of 10 g is given intramuscularly followed by a maintenance dose of 2.5 g intramuscularly every 4 hours for 24 hours magnesium sulfate treatment must be continued for 24 hours after delivery or the last convulsion whichever occurs later with the above mentioned protocols the expected serum range of magnesium is 2 to 3.5 mmol per liter using the pritchard regimen a mean serum magnesium level of 2.1 mmol per liter was found when giving magnesium sulfate parenterally close monitoring of the patient is very important each subsequent dose should only be given after monitoring for clinical signs of hypermagnesemia the tendon reflexes should be present the first sign of impending magnesium sulfate toxicity is disappearance of the patellar reflex respiratory rate should be 
at least 16 per minute. Urine output should be at least 100 ml in 4 hours. In the presence of oliguria, the rate of magnesium administration should be reduced by 50%. Serum magnesium level should also be monitored. Pulse oximetry is another method of monitoring. Slight fall in oxygen saturation below 95% indicates the risk of onset of respiratory depression. The first three parameters should be monitored hourly. If any of them is deranged prior to administration of the next maintenance dose, the dose should be delayed until they become normal. If magnesium toxicity is suspected, immediately discontinue the infusion and administer supplemental oxygen along with 10 ml of 10% calcium gluconate that is 1 gram total intravenously slowly over 5 minutes. Calcium chloride injection can also be used. If respiratory arrest occurs, prompt resuscitation including endotracheal intubation and assisted ventilation are life-saving. A new indication for use of magnesium sulfate is its use in preterm labor for fetal neuroprotection. For women with imminent preterm birth, that is from 23.6 weeks to less than 31.6 weeks, antenatal magnesium sulfate administration should be considered for fetal neuroprotection. This is a level 1A evidence. For this, magnesium sulfate should be administered as 4 grams intravenous loading dose over 30 minutes followed by 1 gram per hour maintenance infusion until birth. Level 2B Evidence Although used in many countries like United States of America, there is no evidence to support the use of magnesium sulfate as a tocolytic agent. A Cochrane review has concluded that magnesium sulfate is ineffective in delaying preterm birth or preventing preterm birth. Minor maternal side effects are feeling of warmth, flushing, nausea and vomiting, muscle weakness, somnolescence, dizziness and irritation at the injection site. The problem with the drug is that its therapeutic dose to toxic dose ratio is low. Adverse events most commonly develop at serum magnesium levels of 3.8 to 5 millimoles per liter whereas the therapeutic range is approximately 2 to 4 millimoles per liter. Loss of patellar reflex occurs at plasma concentrations between 3.5 and 5 millimoles per liter. Respiratory paralysis can occur at serum levels of 5 to 6.5 millimoles per liter. Cardiac conduction is affected at serum levels greater than 7.5 millimoles per liter and cardiac arrest is associated with serum levels greater than 12.5 millimoles per liter. Serious toxicity is very rare. If used in appropriate way and in appropriate doses with appropriate monitoring, it is extremely safe. Remember that majority of toxicities occur when there is deviation from established protocols. Before I enumerate the fetal side effects, let me mention its most important beneficial effect on the fetus. Studies have shown that magnesium sulfate has a protective effect against cerebral palsy in preterm fetuses. Magnesium sulfate readily crosses the placenta and neonatal hypermagnesemia can occur. Fetal side effects include neurological and neuromuscular depression, hyporeflexia, decreased fetal heart rate variability, and disturbed fetal calcium hemostasis. For further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology, refer to following books written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, Questions and Answers 
clinical cases in gynecology, questions and answers, and pelvic reconstructive surgery. If you have found this video useful and informative, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here.